Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Ranch, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showmont. Tonight's been an exciting night. We dropped our full pod, Nick and I. We just finished up about 30 minutes ago or so. But I'm ranting, man, because I got one for you tonight, baby. Kelsey Mitchell is fucking balling. She is balling. The all-star break was Kelsey Mitchell's friend. But before we jump in, thank you again so much for subscribing to our podcast and checking out all our content. Follow us on all of our social media platforms and continue to support our channel as we continue to grow. We are so thankful for all of you. Kelsey Mitchell's balling. I know Kelsey Mitchell can sometimes be a little bit of a headache or seems like maybe she shoots too much. There are times where she, I mean, she's never seen a shot she doesn't like. But, man, she's balling. The only game that she wasn't balling, balling was the loss that they had. Because outside of that loss to Minnesota, 90 to 80, where she was 2 of 10 from 3, <clears throat> which is the only reason she wasn't balling, because otherwise she was 8 for 17. So she was 6 of 7 from 2. But she couldn't hit a three-point shot that night for the most part. She missed a lot of open ones. But, man, Kelsey Mitchell is balling. <laughs> Bro, I you, you can't you got you can't deny this. Ever since she made these comments about you know Indiana Fever, they're you know they got the Oscar next year, and she made that they they they. Unless you have another elite level scoring option, I have changed my tune. Indiana cannot lose Kelsey Mitchell. Kelsey Mitchell and Caitlin Clark are becoming the most dangerous. Backcourt fuck becoming. They are the most dangerous backcourt duo in the WNBA. It's not close. It is not close. The last five games for Kelsey Mitchell since the All-Star break. Coming into tonight, she was leading the league since the All-Star break in scoring. Phoenix, 28. Seattle, 27. Minnesota, 21. Atlanta, 29. Tonight, 23. She is averaging, since the All-Star break, 25.6 points per game on... Is that correct? Yep. Uh... And tonight, very efficient, 8 for 14. Very efficient. 49.5% shooting from the field. 49.5% from the field. Forty-one point seven percent from three. She's fucking balling, man. I, you can't deny what's going on. There, there is. You cannot deny what is going on right now. If you weren't a fan of Kelsey Mitchell's going into the break and you thought that she could be replaced by somebody else, do I think she's irreplaceable? No, I don't think. I, I think there's only a handful of players that are probably irreplaceable to their teams. She's becoming one. If she's not irreplaceable yet, she's becoming irreplaceable. If she continues to play at this level to finish the next 10 games, nine now it's nine games. They're 15 and 16 now after 10 hacks win over Connecticut. She's irreplaceable. You can't replace her. You have to, you have to keep her. I don't know what is it to pay her. You gotta have whatever come to Jesus conversation with her. Caitlin Clark wants to win. And if Kelsey Mitchell wants to score, I am sure that Caitlin Clark will make that shit happen. Because they are they are starting to look absolutely scary. <clears throat> Tonight's win over Connecticut was their best win of the season. The best win of the season. Yes, they have the win over the Liberty, where Caitlin went for a triple-double. They have the win over... Um, they had Minnesota, but that was without Nafisia Collier on the road. 
they have beaten Seattle. Then they did whip Seattle, you know, last couple weeks, a week and a half, week or so ago. The Connecticut win is their best win of the season. And it is against a team that clearly there's some bad blood. DJ Carrington can't stand Caitlin Clark. She dates uh, Nalissa Smith, and you see weird shit going on when they're playing where Nalissa Smith magically moves out the way for her to get a layup or fouls her for no damn reason on a freaking turnaround jump shot, but she could never get over her if she just stood there and kept her hand up. There's weird, weird dynamics to these two teams playing, but it all starts with Caitlin Clark and DeJanae Carrington and the physicality of that matchup. Kelsey Mitchell, though, is the most important player for Indiana when it comes to this type of game because Caitlin Clark is going to deal with people banging the shit out of her and they will need Kelsey Mitchell to put the ball in the hole. And tonight she did. She's done so the entire second half of the season since the all-star game. She looks amazing. Coupled with Lexi Hall now in the starting lineup, that better not change because she was outstanding herself. Fact of the matter is, Indiana showed something tonight because they did not play a perfect game. They were sloppy with the ball. Clark was very loose with the ball. But as a team, they were sloppy. They committed 19 turnovers. They overcame 19 turnovers tonight to win against the second best record in the WNBA. The second, I'm there, they finished with 20 turnovers against the second best record in the league. Absolutely impressive game by the Indiana Fever to come away with that win, to you know, be ahead for a good chunk of it, let them back in. They even fall behind, I think, at one point in the second half. I think they might have. Uh, let me see at one point. 57, 59, 64. There was a, they were up three going into the fourth when they were up nine at the half. Did they ever fall behind? They fell behind 76, 75 with 77, 75 with 329 to go. And Kelsey Mitchell drills a three to make 78, 77. Connecticut comes back and hits a three right back and makes it 80 78. Indiana hits a two uh, from Aaliyah Boston, a 231. It's tied. Caitlin Clark drills it and hits a layup, beats um, Burton on the drive, hits the layup, make 82 80. They make a big stop. Tem- Temi Fag Ben, Fag- what the hell? Is- I can't pronounce her. Temi makes a big stop. Lexi hits a couple of free throws and they win 84 to 80. That's a big, big, gutsy win from Indiana tonight. They're now only a game from 500 after they were 1-8. and eight. They are 14-8 and eight since the start of this season. They are the scariest team in the league right now. And a large reason for that is the play of Kelsey Mitchell. They play Chicago on Friday. You know, that's a grudge match level game. Is that game at home? I believe it is. No, it's on the road. It's in Chicago. 8.30 start on Friday on the road in Chicago. Chicago has fallen to pieces, but Chicago plays hard all the time, and I would expect that Kennedy Carter will be there, even though she's probably sick and shouldn't be, but she'll probably be there, and you're going to have a raucous crowd, obviously. It'll be a highly watched game. On Ion TV, starting at seven thirty, seven thirty on uh, Friday night. But Kelsey Mitchell, she's balling, man. And if you don't see it, I when those when those rankings came out with her being number twenty four, I thought that was probably ranking her a little bit high, because I get caught up in the fact that she really only focuses on scoring. I would still like to see her pass the ball a little bit more. But, man, she's a tough shot maker. She makes tough shots. There's no denying it. She just makes tough shots. And in in games like in the fourth quarter, she's the closer. 
She's the closer. <clears throat> as much as I love Caitlin Clark, when her three is not dropping and she's not going to the basket, I need Caitlin Clark to go to the rim. I need her to attack the basket. Attack, attack, attack. I don't want to see her shooting 30 for three-point shots. I didn't like that shot at 82, 80 from the top of the key. It wasn't the top of the key. It was 10 feet behind the top of the key. Um, it was like a 30-footer. It rims out. Yeah, if it goes in, it's a dagger. The game's over. You know, Mitchell did hit a three earlier that got wiped out on a bogus ass moving screen on uh, Aaliyah Boston that wasn't a moving screen, not to mention she let go of the ball before the supposed foul happened. So she should have finished with 26, not 23. But if Kaylin Clark is not dr- knocking down her, th- her her three ball, I mean, Kelsey Mitchell's your closer. You got to put her in position to close because she has a lightning quick first step. She gets to the basket. She, she's able to finish plays around the rim. She's only 5'8". Much props, Kelsey Mitchell. I'm a believer. I expect every shot she takes to go in. Because she just has to make these tough ass shots. But tonight was a massive step for the Indiana Fever. And it's going to be an exciting finish to the season for these ladies because they have nine games left. I said they'd finish 21-19. and 19. I feel good about it. I will tell you this. I don't see anyone that I can sit here and say is mark, markedly better than them. They have games against Chicago. They play at Dallas. I think that would be a tougher game. They lost at Dallas. So they're going to have – that game is on Sunday. They're going to want to win that game badly, more than normal, because they thought they blew that game before the break because um, <clears throat> defensively they were so bad in that game. But they do have Sabali back with Dallas, so that's the difference for them. They play the Sparks. Then they have the Lynx at home. If you've noticed, the Indiana Fever has been really, really good at home. I think that's a huge game. I think that's a huge game, obviously. But if you were to tell me, based on these last nine games, the Sky, the Wings, the Sparks, I think they're going to crush the Sparks, even though the Sparks are winning by 11 right now versus the Liberty. Um, The Dream. So these are all home games. Sparks, Lynx, and Dream all at home. Aces at home. They have not beat the Aces. And they play back-to-back Aces games at home. They've lost both games to the Aces on the road. Aces are not playing great ball right now. Asia Wilson might be, but her teammates aren't. They have a very, very favorable schedule. They play six of their final nine games at home. Sparks, Lynx, Dream, Aces, Aces, Wings. That is their stretch. And then their final game is at, at the Washington Mystics, who they owe something to for losing that game that they played earlier at home against them. Um, would it shock me if they were 9-0? No. No. It wouldn't. They have the ability to win all these games. I think Connecticut is better than all these teams on their schedule. I think Connecticut and New York are the two best teams in the league. Um, And I think Connecticut is a a tough matchup for them. Um, I think they can – do I think they can go 9-0? Yes. Do I think they will go 9 Probably not. But 7-2? 6-3 for sure. 6-3 gets me what I said, 21-19. I think they absolutely go six and three. I think realistically they could be seven and two, eight and one, and finish with 22 or 23 wins. And then guess what? We're having that Caitlin Clark MVP conversation. But for now, Kelsey Mitchell, you're killing it. You're killing it. And you're making it really, 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 really hard for the Indiana Fever because there's no way in hell they can let you go. There's no way. You are making yourself irreplaceable because this backcourt tandem is becoming absolutely scary. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow. Hit that bell. Come on now.